Hello, and welcome to episode 499 of Rocket Fuel, your daily update of everything that's happening in the Rocket Fuel community. My name is Wack. Today is November 18th, and today's episode is going to be talking about our ETH. We're also going to be talking about um, some ideas about the Rocket Pool Twitter account that people talked about in the community. We're going to be talking about Lido CSM. We're going to be talking about how ETH is money. We're going to be talking about DevCon. We're going to be talking about Meek's ideas. We're going to be talking about so much stuff. So let's get started. 10, 9, ignition sequence start, 6. Okay, and the only place to start is here with a tweet from Jasper saying bye-bye discount. And this is him um, sharing a screenshot of the, the uh, like the RETH price on the secondary market like output that uh, Ramana's bot gives. And this is me calling the instance of it showing that the peg was back to peg basically. Uh, you know, in the, in the last week or so, RETH was down to um, like nearly 0.8%. Eight percent, like below peg, there was a discount in the secondary market, and that's of course because the deposit pool was empty and the buffer for our ETH burns was um, was used up, and that you know we um, there wasn't as much demand for minting our ETH to keep it at peg, so people were kind of selling it under the under the peg. Now, um, last week we saw that there was a large node operator with around 370 validators who was exiting their stake and that was going to send around 10,000 ETH back into the protocol um, and I think that, you know, people in the community kind of knew that this was going to be going back to its peg very soon. Now, there were some ways that you could have traded this. One of them was by, uh, you know, leverage, going leverage long on our ETH. Um, on the on the secondary market, um, like you know, or you could loop your R ETH basically, um, because that gives you the idea that R ETH is going to increase in value, and you could have like you know made a decent amount of returns basically. But of course, the idea was that you know would the would the discount get worse in the meantime? Like you know, we didn't know for sure, but here the discount went away. So um, the idea that we had was that you know this would go away, and then it did. So that of course was a good thing. Now. Well, we saw here that you know the the so the way that it worked was these validators they were exited and they ended up um you know putting the thousands of eth back into the protocol and as they came back into the protocol that was arbed away by bots onto the secondary market so they were buying the r eth on the secondary market and then they were burning it in the deposit pool and by burning it into the deposit pool they were getting eth back at that nice bump in rewards and it was equivalent i think to like um three or four months worth of staking rewards which is which is pretty significant um so as they did this over and over again the the price of our eth on the secondary market went further and further higher until it got back to peg and until it was profit not profitable for them to do that anymore um so once that it was back to peg then the extra RETH collateral um um you know protocol um kind of buffer or, or overrun started to get filled as well and this of course um, has a one percent target of the amount of RETH there is so it has a configured target of 5250 um, ETH to be in that buffer and then that got filled up almost to 3000 um, ETH in there as well however as the weekend went on um, here Black Templar was the first person to see it saying that um, a lot of burns are still coming in so it probably will be back at a discount soon but may, maybe then smart traders will buy it in the belief that it will go back to peg eventually now like I said Black uh, Templar was the first person to see it and then over the course of the weekend as more and more burns happened then that um, overflow amount went down to zero ETH, as you can see on the screen right now, and then and then the, there was then a, a discount again of around a quarter of a percent. So that is, I think, where we stand right now. Actually, let me call the output to see what it says. Um, yeah, um, wait, it's just taking a second. I'm sorry about this, but that's that's basically where we stand right now. Is that yeah, there's about a quarter of a percent, so zero point. 266% discount on the secondary market. Of course, if more people continue to sell their um, RETH on the secondary market, then that discount will get bigger. Um, but maybe there might be people who will buy at this area, assuming that, you know, it could go back to peg and they could make a few weeks of staking rewards potentially. 
Now, one of the reasons why um, it was able to hold up is because the synthetics treasury actually changed their uh, buy order. You know, they were setting up that wall um, last week. And um, with that, you know, their buy only ended up buying around 5%. So with that ETH that they had, which was around 940 ETH, what they did was um, they changed the amount that they were willing to accept in terms of our ETH. So they were willing to buy it closer to PEG. And then this transaction went through 100%. So um, the Synthetics Treasury basically swapped 1,000 ETH, well, 950 ETH pretty much, um, back into into our ETH, which is, which is really, really awesome to see. And um, I guess they got a tiny bit greedy and they did actually get a little bit of a bite with, the, with that, you know, um, lowball offer um they, they were able to swap some of their eth um into our eth at that low price but then the rest of it they just did it at a higher price so that was actually uh, really good to see and um i'm just hoping that you know we can get back to peg and, and keep the peg and that will happen with people wanting to mint our eth and buying our eth and that is something that's been a little bit slow but of course you know we're working on it on all these different fronts and hopefully we will start seeing results for that soon and yeah, that, that's what I said. This is where we stand right now with the, the quarter of a percent discount. Oh, wait, I just saw I just saw a whale splash. Let me see. Um, right here, we just got 2,160 ETH deposited in the deposit pool right now as I'm recording. I saw a flash up on the event screen. Um, that's actually really cool. Let me share that in trading. Um, if people haven't seen it yet, they're probably already there. Let me see, jump to present. Oh yeah, it's already there. <laughs> here, people are really, really fast. And yeah, here, um, you know, there was, um, there was also, yeah, that, so that just went through. So that actually cleared um, a whole lot of, um, uh, <laughs> this is like breaking news. It feels really exciting. So this one uh, deposit actually let 70 mini pools be matched and left the queue, which is absolutely awesome. So um, that, that queue is moving now. So yeah, this is this is really exciting. Like it's been a few days since we've seen a um, a thousand um, a thousand ETH, uh, you know, a thousand ETH plus deposit coming through. So that was that was awesome to see. Now over here, um, I don't know how to refresh this. You can always refresh this by clicking the run button. Where's the run button? Well, there's the run button. So oh, I have to have an account for that. So I guess someone else can run it. But as you can see here, like the queue for the wait was around. Uh, you know 12 or 13 days but now with that deposit it's come down to 10 days again like as you can see over here the most recent um the, the longest waiting uh, validator in the queue was started 10 days ago so that's actually really nice that that's happened so um yeah awesome to see that um breaking news like i said right right while i'm recording i just saw a flash on the screen so that's awesome stuff to see Okay, talking about things that haven't happened in 10 days, that's actually a really nice segue. Um, we have uh, Dago Duck here sharing news that the Rocket Pool team has not posted a tweet uh, on Twitter on their Rocket Pool account uh, for 10 days now. And um, he's saying that we need one RETH bull post per day. Now, on the team's behalf, um, the team are at DevCon. So they were in Bangkok, traveling from Australia. It's a long flight, like quite a grueling trip and of course while they were there they were uh, you know go 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 with uh, building relationships getting the word about rocket pool out there kind of promoting rocket pool at the staking summit talking to people at devcon about rocket pool as well so they're, they're busy right um however you know the dago duck here saying that 10 days without a single tweet um that's kind of egregious and i think like a lot of people in the community kind of jumped on this and Lulo like noticed that uh, you know one of the tweets from last December had 52,000 views and engagements whereas this one um, you know had only 14,000 and that was with them saying we're back having a lot of retweets and likes and stuff but not that many people actually saw it now engagement begets engagement so as the account posts more uh, and yeah, here Vitalik Bordrin says regular posting creates engagement. So what they need to do is, you know, be posting every day, be posting multiple times a day um, about our ETH, basically. But, um, you know, the, the team, I think, is they feel like they're limited in what they can and can't say about Rocket Pool and what they can and can't promote to their followers. 
So Meek here had the idea, he says, can we just give the Rocky Pool account to Jasper? Um, and then Diego Duck says, actually, what you can do is you can give it to multiple people. And then Mr. F says, you can actually delegate access directly to other accounts without needing to share login details. So for example, if I have a, a Twitter account, which I do, um, they could authorize me as a person who can post on the, the Rocky Pool official account. Now, what... Um, yeah, not sure. He says that the team says that they can't incite, uh, incite the buying of our ETH, um, which definitely is a limiting factor in what kind of messaging they can send out there. Um, and then Mr. F says, this is the biggest struggle for so many projects. Honestly, finding someone who can post often and well is much harder to do than being a dev. Um, and Jasper, of course, you know, does a lot of Rocky Pool related posting on Twitter. Um, I do some, but I'm not as good at it as Jasper is. And now um, Jasper, of course, is also a med student and he doesn't have time to do it frequently. So um, I think this idea, um, and he actually, um, Meek had the idea, he said, just give the account to the community um, and let the community run it. Now we could set up a, a, a group of people who could basically, uh, you know, have a multi-sig almost of, of kind of like, you know, a tweet by committee, basically. There could be a thread where a thread or, you know, a DM group or a server or whatever we might need, um, you know, a channel even where the community kind of like shares ideas for things to post. And then if, you know, enough of the people who have access to the account, they think that that is a good thing to post, then they can post it out there. And, you know, we could just change the tagline to say that this is a community run um, Twitter account and the team can then actually go set up Rocket Pool Labs, which would be the which would be like the official team account, which which is what they were talking about doing until a few weeks ago before getting access to this account back. But it's actually a really long um a really long discussion that kind of took place in the community this morning like meek here says just change the bio to decentralized community-led ethereum staking um and basically the idea was that you know um the the project is so much uh, run by the community so much run by uh, the dao and maybe the twitter account could be the same thing as well so um yeah um he says uh, meek says you know about the uh, facilitating communication he says then you know we can delegate to to a non rocket pool legal entity employee uh, it shouldn't be too hard um, meek says that australia has security commission uh, securities commission that's where they're based um, and he said who knew it would be preferential to be in the u.s so um yeah if they can if they can um give the account to someone in the u.s um then you know with with the new uh, regulatory regime that's looking like it's turning up um especially if it's community run um you know and it's kind of like anonymous who might be posting maybe not necessarily but like you know uh, posting by committee i think that might be a, a really really interesting um idea um so maybe it's something that we can bring up with the team in the next um a community summary a community call um and maybe that's something that i can bring up with them as well um maybe i can bring it up to langas directly um because i think that's really interesting okay next we got news of snow cones here who was rejecting a grant um on his behalf or a retroactive payment so snow cones did some work for the rescue node uh, about uh, doing a quarter visibility usage visibility feature um, and that was complete so you know patches had applied for a retroactive grant on snow cones behalf but he says i would prefer not to receive compensation the funds will be better off allocated elsewhere it's on the house thanks for the consideration all the same so that's actually really nice from snow cones to share that information but um, you know, Snow Coins deserves payment for the work that they did. Um, so hopefully, um, you know, the teams can be like, tough luck, you're getting money anyway. <laughs> okay, and then that's just Patches sharing that information about Snow. Um, Pteris had the same um, idea that I did. He says, nonsense, pay him anyway, make it $1,000, which is more than um, more than what he more than what he would have gotten and uh patches says here that's punishment for uh, altruism um shut up and take my money <laughs> so uh the, that was that was nice of course you know i'm not speaking in professional capacity as a gmc member it's actually not even on my committee that that would come to go to the dev committee and i'm on the marketing committee so um yeah that was just me you know whack speaking as as me so yeah okay we already covered that uh let's move on to some staking news now and the big staking news from um thailand from bangkok you know around the the period around devcon and 
Lido Connect that, um, event that took place. So here, Demi had um, an update from Lido saying that CSM is um, evolving and meet the upcoming CSM upgrade. So it looks like there's going to be a new version of CSM at some point next year, maybe towards the middle of the year. And Demi says, while the current version of CSM has already proven to be an absolute market leader for solo stakers, many things can be improved. So some of those things that they want to do are make smaller bond requirements, higher reward efficiency, become a solo staker, program uh, improved performance article and eip 7002 support so that was the stuff that was on the screenshot that i shared on rocket fuel last week so with a lower bond you know they already have a 1.3 eth bond but it seems like they might be lowering it to 0 0.7 eth bond um and then they're saying that with that you know you get a higher reward efficiency so it says the lower the bond the higher the capital efficiency for one eth the current um, apr multiple is 2.3 times um, solo staking so with 0 0.7 eth as a bond that would i think be four times as much as solo staking if not actually uh, yeah around four times as much maybe a little bit more than that um then they have a become a solo staker program so this is the first sustainable case case yc free program that allows anyone to try csm on testnet and get a chance to be qualified as a solo staker for the mainnet solo staker benefits by csm included and then they've got the oracle stuff and you know forced exits with 7002 um so these are the main features of the next CSM upgrade. Stay tuned to know more. So CSM, it looks like they're pushing the limits of what can and can't be done. And of course, you know, as we know, Rocket Pool can't keep up with these numbers. Like we can't go down to 0 0.7 ETH bonds um, at the moment. Like, you know, we're looking at Saturn 2 with 1.5 ETH bonds. Um, I think after a certain point, it just becomes less worthwhile to be an other operator like you know when you count in the hardware costs and then you count in um the fact that you've got to pay for internet and all that kind of stuff um when, if you only have a couple of eth that you're using um you know even if the rewards are boosted as much as they are um it's not that profitable to be a node operator and i think that's one of the reasons why people will keep um keep using lsts basically going forwards even with you know talk of lower bonds potentially at the ethereum level and stuff but this is actually really interesting that they're pushing the limits and i'm sure that this will you know spur um spur greater discussion in the rocket pool community about how we can respond and react okay um so this is following on from a story that i covered last week i think or the week before was that puff eth you know the puffery community um their um lst was off peg and uh, like we know with the rocket pool community when you're off peg it becomes difficult to get eth coming into your um, ecosystem and then it just kind of stays off peg well it looks like they are off peg badly so here jasper um, put in the numbers of swapping 100 eth into puff eth sorry 100 uh, puff eth into eth and it was showing that you'd get 100.618 eth back and the protocol rate is supposed to be uh, 1.0286 so it's 2.2 percent off peg um, and then if you um, do for one eth it's still really bad like you're losing a lot and here jasper when you put in 200 eth worth of uh, sell um, you're actually only getting 150 eth back so the liquidity on the markets is absolutely horrible for puff eth and they're off peg and because they're off peg with the way their mechanism works is they can't bring new validators online and because they can't bring new validators online people who um what they'll do is they'll exit validators uh, to kind of bring it back to peg just like you know that big whale uh, leaving rocket pool brought our eth back to peg over the weekend that's what would happen with puff puff eth uh, the problem is though like people buy their validation tickets and that costs money to buy up front and if you um if you yeah, you buy those tickets and then they're unusable because as long as there's there's a, you know they just won't be bringing new validators online so you can't use those again so it's like it's looking like it's quite a bad experience now i don't know if it's going to be like you know a circularly bad experience like just get worse and worse but at the moment it's looking like not good <laughs> so that, that i just thought i'd bring that to your attention to see how you know it could uh, things in the lst market could be uh kind of fragile in some areas Okay, next we're going to talk about Ethereum news. And here we have this new website that came out of um, DevCon and other areas around DevCon. And this is the ETH is Money website. So here on this website, they are talking about how ETH is money in the Ethereum economy. ETH is held as a store of value and ETH issuance is algorithmic. Uh, this is actually a really beautiful website to look at. And 
as I was saying, it's a beautiful website to look at, and it tells you things about like how ETH has been exported across other other chains and other uh, ecosystems, including like you know layer twos and also side chains or alt layer ones like Ronin or Avalanche, etc. And how you know ETH has moved all to these places, and as ETH moves to more and more places, it becomes more and more money like as it's used in those places. So, for example, I didn't know there was like nearly four thousand ETH on Nia um, and nearly four thousand ETH on Aptos. So that's actually really interesting. Now, this ETH is held as a store of value. Um, here, you know, you could um, you talk about all the different areas and people who have ETH and how much they have. Uh, and this includes things like, you know, Ethereum Foundation, Vitalik, although there's some shortcomings to this particular area, and we're going to be talking about that in a minute, uh, where some criticisms in the Rocket Pool community kind of came from. Um, here we have information about ETH issuance and what that looks like, um, and, you know, how much new ETH is coming onto the market every day. Um, and this is Ethereum's proof of stake issuance with FIBA and has the advantage of being more secure than Bitcoin and more scarce than gold. And then that gives you uh, different um, reasons why it's a... Uh, uh, money so it says it's a store of value it's a unit of account it's a medium of exchange um so that's kind of in line with that triple point asset that bankless were uh putting forward for a few years and this this uh website was made uh in partnership of bankless the daily gui and grow the pie um so you can actually um you know get involved in and kind of push this idea that eth is money to um, wider communities um i think there's still like some things that will need to be worked on in this whole on this whole idea but it's actually really awesome that um they're they're getting started with this and i'm, I'm really happy that you know the ETH is money narrative is kind of getting out there because that is that's where um you know ETH it looks like it is right and that's where it looks like you know we want to go with ETH now like i said over here that you know we there were some um criticisms this is in the rocket pool community here we had Hulu, for example saying that uh, i can already see um btc maxes using you know the the holding section uh, to argue that eth is centralized um meek was especially um upset with that section um he says that's not good for the narrative um he says that you know um it just kind of sends the negative negative connotation out there about um eth and who it's for and who it's not for and he says that's just not a good narrative period the last thing newbies want to see is who's effing rich but then they aren't and there's you know it gives you the idea that um there's the whales are much bigger than they actually are because the like the gini coefficient for eth is actually decent compared to other chains other all layer ones of course and with this it kind of like skews that information he says i think that this should be articulated better um and yeah um <laughs> dago doc says i'm just be afraid of having my network net worth listed on the web as soon as i buy a little eat seeing that list um and yeah so there's there's some criticisms but it looks like um it looks like you know the the website overall is absolutely beautiful and one that I, I think is really really cool to see um and i'm hoping to see like improvements coming to that in the coming weeks okay um after devcon uh we had the bankless summit and with devcon one of the more controversial things that came out of devcon was um justin drake's talk about the beam chain and he kind of put forward this five-year roadmap saying that the beam chain will uh you know change eth and um make sort of change ethereum and make make it awesome um but then of course you know the timeline was five years so you know he said it'll be take one year for kind of getting everyone on board and then two years for research and then two years for development and you know uh, testing and all that kind of stuff and then uh, launching in five years time so with that pushback that he got from that about the be the beam chain i think he was able he went back and kind of like um added more information to it and a talk uh, he presented at bankless summit here so this was um you know looking at the roadmap and um kind of looking at it as if we have one hard fork every year um, and showing that there's um, three different kinds of changes that will happen to ethereum and that will be execution changes uh, data changes and consensus changes so he's saying that basically while the beam chain is five years away what we have here is you know really big regular updates coming out uh, very regularly very frequently um, such as you know moving blobs up and then getting peer das and getting even more blobs and then getting even more blobs and even more blobs in five years time like 128 blobs instead of the three blobs we have now um, then you 
you know, that was just a data side. For consensus side, they're talking about uh, doing pre-confirmed um, pre -confirmed transactions for base rollups, etc. Uh, and then um, validator consolidation, etc. And just making it easier to run validators. And then on the execution side, there's a whole lot of stuff like uh, ETH proofs and uh, ZK EVMs and uh, new kinds of um, 1559, multi 1559 gas limit increases, native roll-ups, and another, like, two more gas limit increases and stuff. So he's saying that this is, you know, there still will be incremental changes. It's not like, you know, we're going to put out Pectra and then the next uh, fork that comes out for Ethereum will be in five years' time. That's not the case at all. Ethereum is going to be undergoing, like, really regular updates, really regular changes, and that's going to be happen happening every year, uh, with some of those things maybe happening uh, more frequently than every year and not necessarily waiting for a hard fork. Okay, in some more Ethereum news now, we've got even more talk of TradFi coming onto crypto. And I'm not quite certain if this is on Ethereum, but from what I've read, I think the case has been made that it will be on Ethereum. So that's why I'm comfortable kind of sharing this here in the Ethereum section. So it's, this is Goldman Sachs. Um, Goldman says, uh, are readying plans to spin out with digital assets platform. Um, and this was news that came out today, uh, earlier this morning. Now, there's no talk in this about where this is going to launch or what it's going to do. Um, however, when we dig into some of the stuff about Goldman Sachs, we start seeing a pattern. So here Sheen in the Rocket Pool Discord shared information saying, um, you know, they're quoting this saying, additionally, Goldman uh, Sachs revealed $22 million worth of Ether ETF holdings, including $22 million in Grayscale Ethereum Mini Trust ETF and $2.6 million in um, Fidelity's Ethereum fund. Um, so if they've got, you know, millions of dollars invested in Ethereum, then it kind of makes sense that it would be building on Ethereum. Um, we've got some more information here as well. And this is from uh, JC saying that Goldman Sachs just announced they'll be launching three um, tokenized funds. Um, and this was from July, actually. So this, you know, this was going way back in time. So uh, that they'll be launching them on Ethereum. So he says, I wrote about this a few months ago. This was linking back to April. Um, and saying that, you know, BlackRock, BlackRock's goal is to be the first mover on chain, no matter the fees, if they're low or high. Um, but if they don't go first, then others will. So he says this puts a lot of pressure on others, like investment banks like Goldman Sachs. Um, you don't participate, you lose clients. You do participate, you lose revenue. Uh, so they decided to participate, but either hide, hide it or lie about it. Um, and then this was the article from Fortune from... Um, July, uh, basically talking about how Goldman Sachs um, to launch th three tokenization projects by the end of the year. Um, and like I said, you know, here the mentions of Ethereum. So they uh, kind of want to uh, follow in the steps of uh, BlackRock's Biddle Fund. Now, Biddle Fund has been moved to, you know, not moved, sorry, added to other layers as well. So it's currently on Ethereum, uh, around $500 million, I think, or thereabouts. And then it's also on, I think, um, Arbitrum and Optimism, I think. It's like some layer twos. And then also an Aptos, which is kind of a random addition. But um, the mass vast majority of it is on Ethereum. And it seems like uh, Goldman Sachs would likely follow that as well. So that's definitely one to keep an eye on. Um, you know, but this is like this old news kind of like circling back and there's getting more information on it. But it looks like that they are ready to, um, you know, launch that because they said they wanted to do it by the end of the year. And now we're in November, there's six weeks left to the end of the year. So it looks like that time is now. Okay, talking about BlackRock, um, you know, leading the way, here they have started a marketing push for um, Ethereum and ETH. And it seems like they are uh, pushing two narratives. The first is like um, an open source app store. And the second is, um, you know, something that undergoes continuous innovation and how it has developed a mindshare. Now, this lines up very much with ETH being a tech play. Now, the problem with this is that um, the tech play narrative, I think, is kind of limited in what ETH does. And I think this is like the, the supposedly the big struggle that, you know, these guys have had in marketing ETH is that, you know, they think that... Um, it's really difficult to kind of like sum it up in one sentence. That's because Ethereum does so much stuff. Um, you know, Justin Drake in his talk uh, at the Bankless Summit was saying that, you know, Ethereum is competing with Bitcoin um, on its layer one as a store of value and as a money. And then on its layer twos, it's, just, um, it's um, competing with Solana uh, as 
uh, the place to come and do really cheap transactions and really fast transactions with transactions soon being faster than Solana and cheaper than Solana as well based on like these pre-confirmations and like you know the blobs and all that kind of stuff and um and yeah it's just it's really really cool stuff so i think that you know we might be seeing more marketing material coming out of blackrock and other other etf providers for uh, eth um, i wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing that in the next few weeks leading up to you know new year starting in 2025 um, where i think you know companies and and agencies will be looking to move around some of their allocations and um seeing how that all works out but they've, they've just got like you know this information here this thing they're introducing eth a ether the um iShares ethereum trust etf and this is you know why should you go with ether they have access they have convenience they have integrated technology the usual stuff so it says ethereum's the second largest cryptocurrency what has driven its growth so they said utility so ethereum's growth can be attributed to this highly programmable blockchain that supports a diverse range of use cases similar to an open source app store see the next page for more details on various use cases supported by the network and then it says continuous in innovation so its growth can be attributed to its active and engaged developer base um, in enhancing the platform's uh, utility and likelihood that it will remain on the forefront of technological innovations. So, like I said, I think that is a little bit limited, but um, it's starting. And I think one of the things that's really interesting with this idea in the Ethereum space is like, you know, Ethereum doesn't need to do marketing because all of these different people who are building on Ethereum will do the marketing on their behalf. Just like, you know, you don't hear like a marketing about Swift, like, you know, the banking uh, architecture. Um, and you know with swift like no one even knows what swift is unless you're kind of like aware of how banks operate but every single bank in the world pretty much uses it and it's completely integrated across everything um except that you know now where they've got the value accrual that comes to eth with more people using it and network effects so that i think um is going to be really interesting to see how they um these different you know aspects of ethereum get marketed in different ways i can kind of understand why they're focusing on really like small things first i guess you know they can say that you know if you look at the uh, apple app store and the google app store they are with companies worth trillions of dollars and they are huge revenue generators so maybe ETH should be worth trillions of dollars and that's fine you know i'm happy for ETH to be worth trillions of dollars next year however the the ETH is so much more than that, right? Like, you know, with the with the store of value stuff, with um, the being a triple point asset, you know, like we were talking about just a few minutes ago as well, is ETH should be tens of trillions of dollars. And that, I think, is all those layers kind of stack on top of each other and really push that forward. Um, I think too many people are bearish on ETH right now. Even people in the Rocket Bull community are just saying ETH is dead. It's all Solana. It's all Bitcoin, blah, blah, blah. And if you just take a tiny step back for just a minute and have a look at uh, what's going on out there, you'll notice very, very quickly that like ETH is pushing the limits in all these different ways. And it's actually incredible like what's happening. The value accrual mechanisms that are being set up are just so elegant. Um, and with the blobs, right? Like, you know, with ETH right now, um, I saw a stat that, you know, in the last seven days, we burned like a couple of million dollars worth of um of eth using blobs um however we burned like 100 million dollars worth i think maybe it was over the last month or maybe it's last week i'm not sure exactly but we burned 100 million dollars worth using layer one um uh, and you know just regular you know through burning fees like 1559 and the idea is that you know in the next in the next in the coming year the blob market's going to get saturated to the point where oh you know it'll be a flipping basically of uh blob fees burning more than layer one fees being burned and eventually you know that will be the case in perpetuity where we will have an ecosystem of hundreds if not thousands of l2s um, and each one of them will be burning a tiny bit of eth and uh, when you add up all those tiny bits of ETH, it will end up being that uh, we're burning potentially a billion dollars a day of ETH. Like that was what Justin Drake was talking about in his Bankless talk. You should definitely go and listen to that Bankless talk if you haven't listened to it. The link is in the description. Uh, it's a fantastic talk and I think it really clarifies how things are going to go forward. Now, yeah, that, that's 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 a really exciting part. We just along for the ride and uh, hope that amazing things are coming. Talking about amazing things that are coming, um, it looks like we're very, very close to Gary Gensler uh, like uh, resigning from the SEC. Now, there has been a lot of talk that this was supposed to happen today. As far as I know, it hasn't happened today yet. So um, I think there was some speculation kind of coming into this. It seems like, you know, his little speech that he released last week, talking about his time at the SEC and all this kind of stuff. Um, I think that kind of got people 
uh, excited about him resigning soon. Um, I think, you know, Gary Gensler resigning will be such a weight off the shoulders of the whole of the crypto community. We know that he is definitely not going to be the chair of the SEC um, come January 21st, basically, because, you know, the Trump administration don't want him to be the chair of the SEC. They can't remove him as a commissioner, but they can remove him as the chair and they can appoint a new chair. Um, so that is, I think, going to be really interesting. But uh, him resigning now, I think, would just be really, really great to see. It'll be a huge boost for the crypto community. And I wouldn't be surprised if the price is pumped based on that. Now, finally, I'm going to end with like some more other news. And this is a post from Meek. So he says, um, Meek is actually like um, a Rocket Pool community member who has kind of been like unhappy with ETH and Rocket Pool recently and uh, kind of been critical of both. In some ways fairly, in some ways not fairly. But um, going to DEF CON, I think for Meek was a huge eye-opening experience. And he has come back totally like rejuvenated and positive and you know, he has um, heard the messaging loud and clear about how um, Ethereum is going to grow and the amazing things ahead for Ethereum. So he has come back and is saying that, um, this is me saying, I'm going to start writing some public stuff about a new project I want to start. I've talked about a couple of people here at DEF CON, but I think my thesis is that values are the new alpha meta. Um, he says, we are now past the capital validation stage. Infra is steadily evolving. We now lack critical layer zero of values coordination and a way to inspire and pull aligned non-crypto people into participate. That isn't about having to buy anything or needing to have specific set of skills or understanding of esoteric terms. So is this what I'll be leaving his current work at Circle um, to work on? And I'm really excited about it. So it looks like, uh, you know, a lot of people in, in the community said that they want to take part in this. Um, Meek said, damn, you worked at Circle. No wonder uh, USDC is so big. <laughs> so anyway, he says that he's throwing this out there because I want to see if anyone else shares this viewpoint. Maybe use this space to share some of the writing and ideas uh, to get critical feedback before sharing more broadly. So um, it looks like, uh, you know, Meek is kind of... Um, gathering ideas and contributors like Jasper says I want to contribute I don't know how often I'll be able to but I want to do it um, he says I'm sure all of us have examples of people in our own lives that have either dismissed crypto because of its perceived toxicity and values misalignment or that it's too intimidating since it's hilarious how our ecosystem solution to this has always been pull them in with monetary gains and he says that's just I think like not smart and he says um uh, nearly every uh, how to onboard the next X users is always focused them, uh, you know, how to buy shit tokens. He says rather than asking them why would anyone want to use it in the first place. So it seems like you know this is a really really interesting values that Meek is hoping to promote. And I reached out to Meek as well, saying that I would like to help however I can in my whatever limited way that I can. But um, this would this would be this would I think be really exciting. And of course, you know, the values uh, we so many of us are here for the values and um if i can do anything to promote those values i'm definitely going to do that so on that note um i'm going to end today's episode i hope you all had a lovely weekend uh, i can't believe tomorrow is episode 500 um it's it's i still haven't fully like i think internalized it like understood it yet but yeah 500 episodes is definitely quite quite a landmark um um and hopefully you know um we'll have 500 more and rocket pool you know will thrive in that time but on that note i'm going to end today's episode so thank you all like i said for watching listening and being part of the rocket fuel community i'll see you tomorrow for episode 500 bye